came to Shomad Rashid, that was in November 80. And before that, I was living in, in Italy, in Sicily. And um, of course, I had been brought up as a Catholic, but I had thrown this away you know, since a long time. And uh, then uh, living in uh, Italy brought me some kind of answer about me and myself somehow. And uh, what was quite amazing, you know, throughout my uh, life before Sahaj is that I was very lucky. I had a lot of luck. My father was not so lucky. And I thought, why am I so lucky? You know, that something, you know, behind my head. And, you know, to make it short, I came to the conclusion that, you know, there was some kind of um, special hand, you know, doing things for me without asking. Things would be coming like this. And I was thinking, you know, I was so lucky it was not normal, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, gradually, I mean, and I can't give all the details, but gradually I came to the conclusion that I had to go to London after that because there something was going to happen, something great, you know, I don't know, I would meet something, somebody, someone, you know, that would give me a big answer to my questions, you know. So I arrived in, um, very excited, I got a teaching job. I was not supposed to have that teaching job, you know, because I had studied Italian. And I wanted to get uh, teaching, of, it was a French assistant job in, uh, in England, but you had to have uh, a degree in English as a French to be admitted in London. And I was, you know, with an Italian degree, so I thought, oh, okay, they won't give me that. But as a matter of fact, <laughs> I got uh, the job and I was so shocked. I said, oh, I shouldn't have had that job. So I talked to one of my students in uh, Italy. He was called Giovanni and he was already reading, you know, seeking. I was not seeking. Actually, I didn't know I was a seeker. And I said, look at that, you know, how amazing it is because uh, I shouldn't have had this job. I was not on the priority list, but I got it. And I'm too lucky. This is e even frightening. And he said, oh, in fact, he said, you know, you're not aware, but uh, you deserve it. I said, why should I deserve it? I did nothing. And he said, yes, you know, but uh, there are vibrations which circulate between people, you know, and your desire can be heard at the other end of the planet. And I said, OK, <laughs> from Palermo to London, it's a long way, you know. <laughs> I said, but then, you know, since that day, I started thinking, but maybe, you know, maybe he's right, so let's see. And then, you know, gradually, I had the feeling I had to go to London to discover a yoga, because he gave me a book to read. And it was called 12 Philosophies, 12 Lessons of Philosophy of Yoga. And they were, it was talking about Kundalini and the spirit, this and that and that. That was my first book I was uh, reading about yoga. And I thought, whoa, that makes sense. OK, yes, you know, so there are vibrations between people, this and that. And yes, this spirit, this Kundalini, OK. So I thought, OK. And I had the strong feeling that I was going to London to get an answer about that. So I thought, OK, I got this job. But it's just a facade, you know. In fact, I knew I was going there to meet somebody, someone, to find someone. And I thought, OK, it's going to be a yoga. And this yoga will have to give me some answers about the mystery of vibrations. But I don't want to do hatha yoga, you know, because it's too slow for me. I'm Aries, you know. <laughs> so I like things to be quick. So I thought, you know, I don't want to be, you know, breathing slowly, making knots in my hair, my nose. No, no, no. I want something, you know. So I knew I was going to meet uh, something and someone. And three weeks after um, I arrived in London, uh, I said, OK, I have to find a yoga, but how can I find that? So I bought time out and, uh, in Victoria Station, I remember. Actually, I will confess, I stole it. <laughs> 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 Because I was not a thief as such, but you know, in those days, you know, we had this kind of uh, communist ideas in our head. You know, we had to be against the rich people, and I was, I was thinking, I don't have enough money, so if I r steal from a big company, you know, it can do bad to them. Of course, I wouldn't uh, uh, steal my neighbor. Mm -hmm. So you know, I took it like that, and then they explained to me it's bad for the for your left nabi to mm -hmm. do to do that. But uh, I said, okay, I want the answer. Why? Why is it bad to, to why is it bad to steal for the left nabi? So I stole another timeout. <laughs> that was after realization. And the same day I stole that timeout, I left my bag 
on the big uh, red double decker bus. I never found the bag again. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I understand now. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, to come back to meeting Srimataji, so uh, I saw a little, very, very tiny advert of Srimataji, you know, with that traditional mm. photograph of her, and a very small text saying, before going back to India, Shramataji is giving realization. I didn't know what self-realization was. I didn't know all this uh, mm. terminology. And I saw free entrance, and I thought, wow, this is for me. I have no money. <laughs> Very good. Let's go and see the, this uh, lecture. And I remember it was on the 6th of November, 80, and it was in a place. We never went again to, to that place, because then it was in the Caxon Hall. And I remember when I got there, I, uh, there were about 50 people, maybe, and they were all doing strange gestures. I thought, what is this? Where, where, where am I? And then Sri Mataji came, came and uh, she gave a talk, and I remember I drank all her words, you know, and I thought, wow, this is what I really feel, you know. She's putting words on what I am living, what I am thinking. It was just a kind of a... Uh, but I can't remember she spoke about vibrations the first evening. And I remember at one stage, and I was looking at her, and you know, it was like if she had a light without, within her face, and she was radiating, and I thought, it is very strange, because she's not white, she's not dark, it was just like light coming from her, but still I could fe see her face uh, very clearly. And at one stage, you know, she stood up, because as John was saying, you know, she was coming you know, to see all the new people. And when she stood up, I felt uh, that big rush of energy coming up, you know, and I said, oh, what was that? But I didn't pay attention. Then she came, you know, she passed next to me, and I had a little fringe. And she did that, and she said, oh, she's sparkling. And I thought, wow, she doesn't know me. How kind, you know, she's, she's, she's uh, so kind. And then uh, there was an English boy there with me. He came for the first time, and he didn't feel anything. And after that, we went to the pub to have a orange, uh, orange glass of orange juice. And he said to me, "Are you going? Did you feel uh, anything?" I said, "Well, I just felt, you know, something." And uh, he said, "Oh, you are lucky, you know, because he had felt nothing." And he said to me, "Are you going to come back?" I said, I don't think so, because I thought it was just a lecture, you know. <laughs> and he said, "But if you felt that." Uh, rush of energy, you should, you should come back. Because I forgot to say that uh, Douglas was there and he worked on me yeah. with an Australian lady, I remember. <coughs> and I remember they were doing things behind me. I said, what are they doing? And then I turned to Douglas, I remember, and I said, you know what? I've come to London to meet uh, yoga. Do you know a good yoga for me? <laughs> 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 he said, well, the yoga of Shramataji. And I said, oh, <laughs> OK. But it was only, you know, the second time when I came back that I really started feeling the vibration. And Maureen was there, you know, and uh, well, yeah. that is it. That's the beginning. Uh.